Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here, looking at Command 11, coming out of the Shepherd of Hermas, the second book of the Shepherd of Hermas called His Commands. We're looking at Command 11, which is that the spirits and prophets are to be tried by their works and of a twofold spirit. All right, guys, if you ever want to know who the false prophet is versus the real prophet, if you want to know who the real man of God is and who you're supposed to be listening to, pay attention to this chapter because he's going to tell us how to, how to identify him. He's going to tell us how to identify the real prophet from the false prophet. All right, guys, so stay tuned. We're going to find that out here in Command 11. All right, now let's look at verse 1. He says, He showed me certain men sitting up on benches, and one sitting in a chair. And he said unto me, See if thou those who sit up on the benches? Sir, said I, I see them. He answered, They are the faithful, and he who sits in the chair is the earthly spirit. All right, now <clears throat> understand what's going on here for you guys who are new to Hermes Academy. New to the Shepherd of Hermas here in Commands, what you have is this gentleman named Hermas who is talking to the angel of repentance. This is the angel over our repentance. He is a very powerful angel, a very serious angel. And he's talking to Hermas, basically preparing Hermas to actually write this book for all of our benefits. So he's giving him a lot of detail of what's going on here. And in this in this one, he's going to describe the two he's going to describe the two types of prophets. So you have two types of spirits here. You have the faithful spirit and you have the earthly spirit. All right, let's look here at verse 2 he says for he cometh not into the assembly of the faithful but avoids it but he joins himself to the doubtful and empty and prophesies to them in corners and hidden places and pleases them by speaking according to all their desires of their heart talking about the earthly spirit talking about the false prophet like we learned about in the last chapter of this book we call him the uh, lion prophet these guys, you know, they don't want to come into the assembly of the faithful. You know, they don't want to go around those who are trying to keep the commandments and do what the scripture says and, you know, trying to be obedient. No, they want to go find those individuals who are doubtful, those who don't want to do the uh, commandments and don't want to follow the scripture. He goes and starts prophesying to them in corners and hidden places and you know even our churches down there maybe that's why they have stained glass walls is because of stained glass windows is so the pro false prophet can go down there and tell these guys what they want to hear like we learned in the last chapter what does he say and pleases them by speaking according to all their desires of their heart yeah that's pretty much what the false prophet is doing the lying prophet is he does we his he just speaks according to what man wants to hear just tells him what he wants to hear whatever it is you go in and you ask him about your car your wife or whatever's going on and he's going to look at you a minute and, and he's going to look at you and listen to you and try to figure out what the right answer is based on what you're saying and he's going to tell you what you want to hear all right let's look at verse three he says for he placing himself among empty vessels is not broken, but the one fitteth to the other. But when he cometh into the company of just men who are full of the spirit of God and they pray unto the Lord, that man is emptied because the earthly spirit flies from him and he is dumb and cannot speak anything. Yeah, he is an earthly spirit and he found himself in an environment around holy men speaking about holy things. And he's just not going to have anything to say. He's just going to be quiet. You know, he, he, he he's not going to be able to put up, you know, add anything to the prayer, add anything to the conversation. There's nothing in him. He said that man is empty and that earthly spirit is going to flee from him, making him dumb in that instance. Right. So that's one way we can tell is, you know, when the guy, you know. Any when we were talking about other stuff, he had a whole lot to say, and you know when we were making up stuff, you know he 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 had something to say. But now that we're speaking on holy things, he's quiet. You know he doesn't really have anything. He can't contribute anything. Well, that's because you know he's an empty spirit. Look at verse four. As if in a storehouse, you should stop up wine or oil, and among those vessels place an empty jar, and when afterwards you come to open it. You shall find it empty as you stopped it up. And so those empty prophets 
when they come among the spirits of the just are found to be such as they came. Meaning these guys aren't reading the word. They aren't filling up the jar full of the, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that's found only in our scripture. So when you come to get some or retrieve some of it back out of these jars, you're going to find them just as empty as they was when you stopped them up. When you put them in there, there was nothing in there. They, you know, they didn't bother to put anything in their bottle before you before they you know were placed on the shelf and now you open that bottle back up and it's still going to be empty and void of any truth all right let's look at verse five and i said how then shall a man be able to discern them consider what i'm going to say concerning both kinds of men and as i speak unto thee so shalt thou prove the prophet of god and the false prophet all right so he's about to tell us how to prove one from the other the prophet of god from the false prophet right remember there are a lot of false prophets out in the world today and our churches today um a lot of these guys take on the titles a lot you know a lot of them go home and they they you know decide that they don't have a big enough title like the reverend pastor deacon dr doug decides that he doesn't have enough titles and he decides he's going to be the reverend prophet pastor deacon dr doug and then he expects everybody to call him prophet or that's one way they do it or another way is somebody else decides you know that they're a prophet they, they go and they 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 go to another church and you can imagine a bunch of silly women running down to a church where you know they've got this prophet on uh on 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 stage there and and she's fascinated about the prophet and she goes back home to her husband and say hey you should be a prophet too i know you go by bishop now but you know what we're gonna call start calling you prophet now since that's a higher ta higher title and you know and and that's what it's all about these guys are are false they're fake but let's go on to verse six and first try the man who has the spirit of god because the spirit which is from above is humble and quiet and departs from all wickedness and from the vain desires of the present world and makes himself more humble than all men and answers to no one when he is asked nor to everyone singly for the spirit of God does not speak to a man when he will but when God pleases all right so this is how you tell the real prophet the real man of God he's humble he's quiet he doesn't want anything to do with wickedness. The vain desires of the present world, he wants nothing to do with that at all. Right? He says that he tries to make himself humble above all men. So when he finds himself in his room and everybody is, you know, gloating over themselves and and you know, you know, put putting out their accolades on why they should be worshipped or why, you know, they should be, you know, on, on the pulpit, this guy is humble. He's sitting down and he's quiet. Why? Because he know that his everything that he has is coming from the Father, not of himself. He has nothing to boast of, nothing to brag about, because the Father has given him everything. Why is the false prophet? He knows that he's getting all of his accomplishments through his own efforts, and so he feels prideful. He feels boastful, right? And then he says, but then notice this other part. He says, and answers to no one when he is asked nor to everyone singly meaning when you start asking him questions about what's going to happen in your life or uh, you know am i going to get this wife or am i going to get this job or you know is this thing going to happen for me the 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 real prophet knows that he has no answers he can't answer that i can't tell you that i don't know the future you know if if if, if i want to have any hope of giving you an answer at all i'm going to have to go before the father you know and and ask for some type of you know um divine inspiration on the answer whereas the other guy the false prophet, he's just going to tell you what you want to hear real quick. He's going to his answer is going to be popping like popcorn. He's going to he's going to blurt it out real quick, faster than you can get it out. Faster than you can get it out. Of course, that thing is going to work in your favor. And like we learned in the in the in the chapter before, he's going to sprinkle some truth on it and say stuff like no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And, you know, all things work for good for those who love the Lord. Of course, you're going to get everything you, you desire and want. You know that that's the false prophet. Let's look at verse 7. When therefore a man who has the spirit of God has come into the church of the righteous, who has the faith of God, and they pray unto the Lord, then the Holy Spirit of God fills that man with the blessed spirit, and he speaks in the congregation as he is moved of God. 
he starts speaking once the father starts telling him what to what to speak and it may be a little bit off track it may sound disjointed it may sound like okay we were talking about one thing why are you talking about another one it's because he's he's being led by the spirit to talk he's being led by the holy ghost to, to talk whereas the other guy is just making stuff up you, you know saying whatever it is that's going to put him in the best light at that moment the real prophet is going to speak what the lord tells him to speak at at that time all right let's look at verse eight thus therefore is the spirit of god known because whosoever speaketh by the spirit of god speaketh as the lord will that's what it means by speaking by the spirit of god you speaking what the father wants you to say not what man wants you to say you know and, and you you think about the prophets of old how they were always hated by everybody nobody wanted anything to do with the prophets most of them were killed killed by the father's own people killed by their own brothers the 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 israelites killed a lot of these prophets why because they did not want to hear the message that these prophets was putting out it's not a good it's not a pleasant message that the father is not sending us you know messages through these prophets saying you know you're going to get everything you desire usually the message from these prophets are like jonah you know if you don't straighten up you're going to die kind of messages and they was always rejected by the the children of the children that was hearing the messages but let's go on to verse 9 here now concerning the earthly spirit which is empty and foolish and without virtue and first of all the man who is supposed to have the spirit whereas he has it not in reality exalts himself and desires to have the first seat and is wicked and full of words talking about the false prophet guys he's telling us how to tell who is the false prophet look what he says right here talking about the false prophet he said he exalted himself and desires to have the first seat and is wicked and is full of words so when you get down there a bunch of bunch of people and you're trying to decide which one is the false prophet look at the one who wants to be in the front row look at the ones that want to be in the pulpit look at the one who want who 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 thinks he's supposed to be exalted or in some higher position than everybody else in the church why should he you know he's he's receiving his his inspiration from the father everybody's receiving inf inspiration from the father if he was a real prophet he wouldn't have any re he, he would have no reason to be sitting in the front seat no reason to be exalting himself why would he be but the false prophet he's quick to do so he wants to do so he needs to do so and then it's full of words part yeah steps on my toes because i do these kind of shows and i talk a lot doing these shows does that make me a false prophet i don't know you decide let's look at verse 10 and spends his time in pleasure and in all manner of voluptuousness and receives the reward of divination which he which he receives not he does not divine talking about the false prophet here this, he, these guys want to have the best stuff they, they got on you know the 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 uh their suits and their you know their really really thin socks with their really really expensive shoes that they got a proper way all up in your face so you can look at the bottom of their shoes and you know all of that kind of stuff the these guys are living in pleasure these are the false prophets you know they spend their time in, in pleasure they're not doing any any of the hard labor any of the hard work that that's involved in this ministry they just want to be in the first seats doing the best stuff you know they want to be doing the pleasurable stuff and then look at this part right here and receives the reward of divination meaning they're getting paid meaning that these guys are coming in and and telling you the word of god and then expecting you to pay them for it right and he says which if he receives not he does not divine have you ever heard of a preacher that will not preach unless you give him a certain amount of money what this is what we're talking about here this is how you know he's a false prophet how he, he's gotten this information for free how is he now going to demand payment for it you know i've heard of one guy who who if you invite him to your church uh, i think it's td jakey or somebody like that if you do if you invite him to your church he's going to require you to send him ten thousand tens of thousands of dollars up front you know and then you're going to be expected to pay for limousines you're going to be expected to pay for hotel rooms all of this uh pleasurable and joyous stuff or he's not going to come he's not going to come at all you can forget about it the dude ain't going to show up uh, that's what he's talking about let's look at verse 11 should the spirit of god receive reward and divine 
it does not become a prophet of God to do so. Meaning you can't pay people to, to prophesy. How would Elijah or Moses or somebody be expected to, to receive payment? You guys got now got to pay me or I'm not going to tell you what the father says. The, the father tells Moses, go tell the children of Israel such and such. And he like, you know what? They didn't pay me last time you told me to send them this message. I ain't telling them nothing. That that How are you going to do that? You know, that 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 ain't. That ain't real. That's not that's not, you know, what you would expect of the prophet of the most high. That's what you expect from the prophet of Baal. And that's what you're getting from the prophet of Baal, too. But we'll get into that in another chapter. All right. Let's go right here. Verse 12. Thus you see if the life of each of these kinds of prophets. Wherefore, prove that man by his life and works. Who says that he has the Holy Spirit and believe the spirit which comes from God and has the power of such. But believe not the earthly and empty spirit, which is from the devil, in whom there is no faith nor virtue. Yeah, guys, you got to stick to the right guy. That's why he's taking the time to show you which one is which, because it's extremely important on who you follow. If you follow the false prophet, you're going to end up in the wrong place. You're going to end up walking down the right, wrong path, doing the wrong stuff. You have to make sure you understand who the true prophet is, who the true man of God is, so you can follow that guy. He's the one that's going to get you through the tribulation and into the promised land, into the millennial age, while the other guy, he's going to keep telling you about a rapture that's going to come and supernaturally suck you off this planet and thrust you into the spirit world. When the, when the false prophet and all of his little minions are part of the two thirds of all humanity that's about to die in this tribulation. You don't want to be you don't want to be counted in that number. So you better know who it is that you're talking to. And that's another way you can tell which is which. Look right here. He says, but believe not the earthly and empty spirit, which is from the devil in whom there is no faith and virtue, no faith, nor virtue. This guy has all of his faith in money. You know, he, 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 that's why he needs payment for his job because he knows he needs money to survive. Whereas the real prophet, he knows that the father is going to take care of his needs and the needs of his family. The other guy, he ain't going to do nothing without getting paid. And then he has no virtue at all. He, he doesn't really care about virtues. Virtues are not really a part of what he's wanting to do. You know, so he really just does whatever he wants to do. He's a false prophet. All right, let's go on to verse 13. Hear now the similitude which I am about to speak unto thee. Take a stone and throw it towards heaven, and take a spout of water and mount it up thitherward, and see if thou canst reach unto heaven. All right, now this is the angel of repentance here that's talking to Hermas, and he's trying to make Hermas understand the difference between a godly spirit and an earthly spirit using these 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 stones and this water here. Tell him to shoot it up into heaven, shoot it into space, take that rock and throw it into outer space. Look at verse 14. Sir, said I, how can that be done? For neither of those things which you have mentioned are possible to be done. And he answered, Therefore, as these things cannot be done, so is the earthly spirit without virtue and without effect, meaning he's powerless. He doesn't really have any power at all. He's coming from the earth. But watch what he says right here in 15. Understand yet further the power which cometh from above in this similitude. The grains of hell that drop down are exceedingly small, and yet when they fall upon the head of a man, how do they cause pain to it? Let's talk about stuff from coming from above down to the earth. Now you throw that rock up. They don't care how hard you throw it up there. It's going to go up a little while and then it's going to, you know, fizzle out and then it's going to fall back down here to earth. But look at the, but look, even small hailstones, when they, when they're traveling from so far above, looks, they've, they've, they reach critical velocity and they're going to hurt when they hit you, you know? And that's what he's talking about. You can take a big rock and throw it up. And it's not going to have much of an effect, but a little bitty grain of hell is going to hurt. You know, that's the difference between the spirits that's coming from below to above and those that are coming from above to below. But let's go on. 16 says, and again, consider the droppings of a house, how the little drops falling upon the earth work a hollow in the stone. Yeah, talking about the raindrops falling off the roof over time, that little bit of raindrop will seem so harmless will actually create a big divot in a rock. It'll cut a big hole in a rock. You just let it sit there and drip there for a number of years, and it's going to end up, you know, that little bitty drop of water is actually going to cut that stone. Look at verse 17. So in like manner, the least things which come from above 
and fall upon the earth have great force. Wherefore, join thyself to this spirit which has the power and depart from the other which is empty. Meaning come out of her, guys. Remember, Revelation says come out of her. Get away from these false prophets. They may sound good. They may smell good. They may look good, guys. But they are going to lead you in the wrong direction. They are going to lead you. They're going to lead you into the sea of apostasy is where they're going to take you. But and, and it's not going to work out well for you. All right, guys, we're going to wrap this up. Stacey, you got anything? Yeah, I wanted just to say that how um, if you look in the book of Numbers and talking about the false prophet, if you look in the book of Numbers, remember in um, I think it's chapter 16 where Korah um, had got a lot, got himself and uh, um, I think it was 250 other people of the congregation and he brought them to Moses and he was uh, he confronted Moses about, you know, uh, some of the things that he were doing and it's not that he uh, was so upset with Moses but he wanted he was uh, wanted the priesthood away from Aaron so it made me think about how the pro the false prophets how they don't really want uh, care too much to hold the position of the one that's doing the lot doing the most work which is Moses but they want the the glamour, well, yeah, yeah, the glamour, Aaron with the beautiful robe and going in to meet the Most High, doing and all the talking. yeah, doing the talking and and he was looking good and he had the bells and the 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 beautiful, you know, he was just, I mean, he was outfitted nice and that's the job they wanted. They was contending with Moses about Aaron about how uh, they wanted the priesthood and what ended up happening is. We know that the Most High had the um, the earth to open up his mouth and swallow uh, Korah, but he tells us to separate ourselves from these kind of people, from these quote unquote uh, people who who desires the 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 beauty of the priesthood. Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, a good point. He, they didn't want to go up on up on that mountain and be up there, you know, without any food or water for 40 days waiting for the commands. You know, they just wanted to have the first seat, wanted to be in the first position. But like you said, stays of the earth, what swallowed him up? Well, that's what's about to happen to him now, y'all. This tribulation promises to swallow up the false prophet. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. We've got one more installment to make in this series, talking about the Shepherd of Hermas from the Book of Commands. we got the next section, which is the summer, to summarize it all, I believe, which is Command 12. All right, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that little bell button so you can get a notification when we get that class up. We're going to start getting it edited up. All right, y'all. Godspeed, Hermas Academy. Power, patience, continence, and faith. We teach virtue.